Allison and Kelly. And we are here today. We're going to be live with you both here and also on the Damesley Instagram. Encourage you to head over there as well if you're not on here. Um, we're going to be talking about all things India today. All things India today. I'm super, super excited. We're talking about a trip that we put together that is one of a kind and very special. And, you know, I think India, there's a lot of misperceptions. Absolutely. So I think it's going to be really great to talk about those yes. and why we need to all put it on our destination list. Yeah. yeah. There is a reason why India should be at the top of everyone's bucket list. And we were just talking about, you know, we continue to hear these narratives so much about traveling to India, especially for a female and what that means. But there's a very big difference between the difference between discomfort and danger and statistics and sensationalism. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well as the exciting details of the tour um, that I'm co-leading with Damesley, which is an absolutely incredible organization. And, and Kelly is really a, a pioneer in the industry of, of leading and, and promoting women's travel in all capacities. And so it really is an honor for me to be able to join them on this experience. Yay! So we have about four minutes before we go live on Damesley. Yes. Um, so if you're here on YouTube with us, like, let us know in the chat. Say hi. Let us know where you're coming in from. Yes. And I guess I will introduce myself to you all because you, you know, my, my Dames Lake crew will know me. <laughs> so my name is Kelly Lewis and I'm the founder of a company called Dames Lee. We focus on uh, once in a lifetime adventures for women. We do small group travel for women only. Um, and we do that just to be able to create community. One huge thing for us is creating community and um, we're very cause driven. So anytime we get to support women around the world, we like to. <laughs> yes. So working with Allison has been a dream and it was a total no brainer when it comes to looking for a specialist in India. You know, you know India inside and out and yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, it is definitely it's my second home. As many of you on our channel know here, it's um, certainly an area that I have explored um, professionally, personally with groups, solo, with family, with friends for the last, <clears throat> gosh, 20 years, almost 20 years now. So there's, um, you know, for those that you that are not familiar, we actually, I started off in the academic world. And so my research and my assignments as I was writing for publications took me to India and took me off of the typical tourist path. And I really got to experience the heart of the communities and the culture. Um, and that's what really planted the seeds for me to launch Soda Travel 14 years ago, um, was to allow travelers this unique opportunity to visit these destinations and have these experiences that I wasn't finding elsewhere. Um, and so we get to translate a lot of those really immersive and integrative experiences with our tour in March. So yeah. it's going to be so exciting. Post. Pre mid post pandemic travel, depending on where you're talking coming from. Totally. Um, but we're also going to talk about what that looks like in India as well and what pandemic travel um, is currently now and how it seems to be shaping up for early 2022. Yep. So it's going to look kind of weird to you guys in YouTube because we, <laughs> also, <we're> talking here? <laughs> we also have my phone on the Damesy platform. Yes. So um, so sorry about the view of my <laughs> right ear, but <laughs> um, it's going to be great. Yes. So. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Yes, I know. And thank you for taking the time to join us wherever you're coming from. And for those that are going to be catching up later, you can always send us questions um, afterwards if you have any general questions about India, any cultural curiosities, or um, any questions about the trip. Um, and then if the end of this, we're going to be talking about um, a little incentive for you. If you're thinking about joining the tour, if you're just there, uh, maybe we'll have something that'll make you sign up and go, you know what, this is the time. Um, and these are the people that I would like to travel with for this. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be so fun. I promise you, you will not regret it. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go live over on the Damesley channel. So Whoop. pardon me <laughs> <laughs> while I do that. What's up, travel babes? It's Kelly Lewis here with Allison Soda. Hello. And today we are here to talk to you about India. <laughs> Beautiful, vibrant India. Beautiful, vibrant India. So we have an incredible tour going with Allison to India, um, but India gets a bad rep. So we want to talk with her today about 
what's going on in India, what our trip looks like, and stay to the very, very end because we have an incentive for you just for joining. You're going to get a juicy discount on our India tour. Yes. So, yeah. So, Allison, introduce yes. yourself, please. So, hello, everyone. Um, as Kelly said, I am um, I'm the president of Soda Travel, and we are a company that specializes in the Indian subcontinent and South Asia. <clears throat> My background has been that I have actually been studying and researching India for almost 20 years now. It was the focus of my academics. And from there, I started researching and writing for various international publications. And so on those assignments, I was going across India into areas and communities that were generally not visited by tourists. Um, and so I really felt like so much at that time um, that they, these programs were really taking people just to the highlights. And there was a, a, a massive impact on, on what that meant um, environmentally, sustainably. Um, and so we wanted to create and plant some seeds for our company that really took travelers off into these communities of real immersive and integrative experiences. And so I have India is Hey, Kelly. <laughs> um, India is my second home. And so I have been very fortunate in many personal and professional capacities to traverse the country. And I'm really excited. We're going to be headed back, actually, in just a few weeks um, to be going there and checking out some new properties, experiences, and, um, you know, oversee our operations in this pandemic slash hopefully leading toward post-pandemic travel. Totally. Um, but yeah, that's a little about me. And we're really excited to be co-leading this incredible tour. Um, and we have some, we really want to explore India from a perspective that is going to be enriching. And I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, totally. So you guys know here at Damesley, we are all about putting together bucket list adventures for creative and professional women. We bring together badass women and we take them to badass places yes. to do really cool things. So one of the things that I've always wanted to do is go to the Holy Festival. Ever since I saw pictures of people covered in paint and paint in their hair, I have wanted to do that. So, of course, I turned to Allison, who's an expert in India, to put together this trip. And our tour, um, our Damesley tour, goes to some really amazing places in India, starting in Delhi. Yes. So. Yes. So the guests will, you will arrive in Delhi, and that will be our entry and exit point. Um, and the first couple of days, we're going to just be easing in to the rhythm of India. Um, I'm going to take you into some places that you probably will not ever find in a guidebook. And that, to me, is the really special experiences that we like to offer for our guests and our travelers. We're going to go into the heart of Old Delhi, into the markets, and get, a, get into these places where the locals are. Um, we're going to meet with some friends of ours at their homes and at their establishments and talk about the role of women and, and really supporting some of these women-owned organizations and entrepreneurs that are um, having a major impact on the, on the country moving forward um, and be able to go to see some of New Delhi, some of Old Delhi, and really start off with a general introduction to the pulse of the country. Yeah, and it is a chaotic one. So <laughs> I'm really excited about this because, you know, I love to, like, give you experiences that only we can give you. And so with Allison's connections and history in India, I know we're going to do some really unique off the beaten path stuff. So after Delhi, we take the train to Agra. And the reason why we're doing a day trip to Agra is because it allows you to take an express train, which is only 90 minutes as opposed to a four hour drive. And the train always adds a cultural element. Now, this is not the trains that you may be seeing where people are sitting on top and hanging off the sides. You're going to be in executive class and traveling with white glove service, to have breakfast, um, and seeing some of the countryside. Um, and then we'll enter into Agra, um, and then we will go and see the majestic Taj Mahal. Oh, you can't go to India and not see the Taj Mahal. Oh. I mean, it is a world wonder yes. for a reason. It's also one of the be most beautiful love stories I think I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. So we have to go do that. We um, are. I'm so excited to see that and to experience it in a really kind of premium and luxe way. Yeah, we're going to take you from a couple different vantage points. So we're going to take you inside the monument, of course, but then we're going to take you to some parts behind the monuments. You can have some spectacular shots and with the way that the sun is hitting um, the marble. And so we'll have that. And then we'll head over. We'll have, visit the Agra 
fort as well, which is a really important part of history when you're talking about the Taj. And you'll learn why if you come on the trip. <laughs> um, and then we're at, once we have lunch at a five-star, absolutely gorgeous property um, that is located adjacent to the Taj complex. And then from there, we will continue on to a place called Shiro's Hangout. And I don't know if you all are familiar with that, but um, acid attack victims, it is something that was more prevalent in Indian culture, unfortunately. And so they started an organization called Shiro's and there's a location in Agra and it's where women who are the victims of acid attacks, um, they run that establishment. They're the ones who are cooking and serving and it's able to, they're able to generate an income um, and a livelihood for their families. And the community that they've, that they've created there is just like nothing I've really ever seen. And so we're definitely going to take some time to have some, uh, some chai and some conversation with these women. I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, one of James's core values is community and, and the other is cause. Yeah. So anytime we can support women worldwide, we like to do that. So number one, that's why I'm choosing to work with Allison because <laughs> she's a woman owned business. <laughs> and I think it's going to be really impactful to visit Shiro's. So I'm super yeah. excited about that. Yeah. And then where do we go? So then we're going to take the train back in in the evening, spend the night. And then the next day we get up and we take another gorgeous train ride up to a town called Hardvar. And Hardvar is at the base of the Himalayas and it's a pilgrimage destination on the Ganges River. And many of you may have heard of Varanasi or Banaras, which is a pretty common destination that people talk about. Yeah. Um, but we're going. The reason why I like to include Hardvar is for a few reasons. One, it does not have the pollution that Varanasi has because we're up at the foothills of the Himalayas. You're closer to the source, so the river is moving faster and it's much cleaner. Um, the second reason, and, and probably more primary one, is that you're going to find far less tourists. It is not going to be taking on what I call a spiritual Disneyland. Often in Varanasi these days, you go for the arti ceremony and you have vendors selling keychains and balloons yeah. and t-shirts. And you're also with throngs of people coming off of the buses. And it almost appears like a, a staged experience, even though the, the root of it is so spiritual in nature. And one of the ways, reasons I love Hardvar is you just see thousands of people come down <laughs> authentically every single day to the river to worship the Ganges as the goddess. And the ceremony, we're going to have VIP seating so that we can really have an incredible vantage point to the priests and the river. And then if you would like, you will have the opportunity at the end to also have your own blessing with the priest on the Ganges. I love this. Yeah. This is going to be such a cool trip. And, you know, another advantage to working with us on this trip is really like exclusivity and staying in <laughs> small travel bubbles. So we're just coming out of a pandemic. We're not even out of it yet. And I know that India was super, super hard hit by the pandemic. So I wanted to ask you just very quickly, yeah. you know, like what's the situation in India like in terms of COVID and the pandemic and what can our travelers expect? It's a great question. So um, for where India was a few months ago, the numbers are absolutely incredible. They're back to a level one, um, which is even lower than what we are here in the United States. Um, and they are, um, the numbers even in Delhi just a couple days ago, they had 17 new cases out of 23 million people. Wow. So then, especially the destinations where we're going, the numbers just continue to drop. It's almost been eradicated in certain areas. And so we're just really thankful on so many fronts um, for that, not only for the people there, but also for the, you know, regeneration of the tourism industry, which is so important to everyone there. Um, when you're there, masks will be, you know, required, of course, when we're out and about and when we're doing certain site visits. But but in general, when we're on the vehicles, um, we'll be able to have our masks removed and, you know, have conversation through that. Um, and so in terms of the logistics of travel, it's it's going to be pretty similar to what it would be pre-pandemic. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when we travel on Davesley Tours now, we really try to establish a bubble. So yeah. we ask everyone to test into that bubble and then we make sure that everyone can get home because you'll have to test out to get back to the U.S. So. Yes. Uh, we do our best to keep it as safe as possible. And I just want to reassure you if you're thinking about India, because, you know, the first thing you think about when you think of India is like crowds. Yes, <laughs> so definitely. I know that. Um, but also not all Indian adventures are the same. And that's the other thing that I wanted to talk about. I think there's this misperception that India has to be dirt cheap. Right. That like you can only go to India if you're backpacking and you're looking to spend four dollars a day. And like that's the best way of doing India. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was having lunch with Allison recently and we were talking about luxury travel and she was saying there's no better place in the world for hospitality than India. It's true. 
And there, when if you join us here, then you will know that the hospitality of, Indus, of India is truly like no other place I've ever been in the world. It, there's just nothing that compares to it. And we're going to be staying in some really lovely properties, ones that bring the aesthetics of India inside some heritage boutique Haveli type properties. And, um, you know, I was telling Kelly that one of the um, comments that we most receive by our clients and our guests on our tours is how refreshing it is to have a nice place to go back to because India in all of its glory is vibrant and chaotic and all of the best ways, but to have a place to go back at the end of the day um, to kind of rejuvenate a bit and have some time of restoration, then you're ready to ease back in to all of the activities of the next day. Totally. So there is definitely an advantage to that and also just staying at some really cool properties. Yeah. And also India can, India can be very expensive and India can be very cheap. Yes. But the experiences that you have when you pay $4 versus paying even a hundred dollars. Yes is night and freaking day. That's right. <laughs> like it could not be more different. Um, and I noticed this myself when I was traveling through India. Like I was traveling in India with some friends and, you know, they were on a very limited budget and I just like wasn't having fun because it was yeah. so hot. And I, you know, it was like, it was just painfully, unnecessarily painful. And then, you know, if you just move to a different bracket of travel, yeah things get, it, the experience is so different. I mean, just having cold water and air conditioning in your room and toilet paper is like a game changer. That's right. So would I recommend doing India on $4 a day? No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> for okay. the price that you pay, you can just get so much more. The value for the money is incredible. And, you know, this tour is priced at such an incredible point for what I feel are the experiences that you're getting in such a small group immersive environment. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So let's get back to our itinerary. So yes. after Hardwar. So Hardwar, we'll spend a little more time visiting some of the sacred caves up in Rishikesh and going to the temples and um, experiencing the life on the river, right? I mean, up in that area, the locals really contribute the river to be their source of everything. And so we'll be able to see them bathing and praying and just get an idea in a more um, spiritually resonant destination um, on the program. And then from there, we are going to fly down to Jaipur, which is the pink city. My favorite. And the capital of Rajasthan. I love Jaipur. It's so much fun. It's so vibrant. And there's so many cool opportunities to buy just beautiful rugs. In fact, in my bedroom, I have a ton of like gorgeous wall hangings that I got in Jaipur. Um, so, so much to see there. And I'm so excited to take you there. Yeah. It's an incredible destination for shopping. Um, many of our shopping tours always include several days alone just in Jaipur because a lot of the artisans from throughout the country come and settle there to sell their merchandise and to um, make it, you know, for everyone. So we'll be able to have some of that. But we're also going to be going to an elephant sanctuary that's a no-ride sanctuary, which is incredible. They're actually part of our giving back program. And so a percentage of our programs go to this organization called Elephantastic. I know the owner, Raul, and he's just an absolute gem um, and making sure that these elephants live out the rest of their lives um, in a really incredible way. And so we'll be able to go there. I love that. Have some time with them, with the elephants. Um, and then the next day we'll be doing some of the uh, the sites in Jaipur, heading up to the, the majestic fort, which you probably have seen plastered over all these things, often synonymous yeah, with the region. It should probably be the cover photo for this whole trip because yeah. it's so iconic. It really is. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we'll meet with some more, um, we're going to be doing some more, um, or, or experiences with women organizations as well, supporting them locally. And then we absolutely are going to be doing some, a cooking class there because mm -hmm. Rajasthani cuisine is really special and delicious. And so we're going to meet with some friends of ours who will take us on a culinary journey through Rajasthan. Ooh, I can't wait for that. I want to come home with new recipes. Yes. <laughs> All right. After Jaipur. After Jaipur, we're going to head up and experience Holi. Woo! So this is where we have, um, we're going to drive a couple hours from Jaipur and stay at a 17th century palace. And so we're going to experience holy, but we're going to do it in a way where you're not surrounded by millions of people, but you're still going to have a truly authentic experience because what happens is the palace brings in the people from the neighboring communities. And so we have it right there on the property. We have the musicians, we have the lunch catered, we have the colored powder. We'll even be given the clothing to wear. So you can get as messy as you like with it. We'll have henna artists there to do some henna for you and then in the evening we'll have a really magical dinner underneath the stars in the garden of the palace. Oh, I am so excited <laughs> about this and also I was telling Allison relating to COVID 
you know, when you think of the Holy Festival, you probably picture a lot of people in crowds. And so it's really nice to hear that we can still have a relatively private but very authentic ceremony within the place that we're staying. So we're not in crowds of four or 500 people, just yeah. just because that spikes my anxiety and probably yeah. yours. You Absolutely. Know? So I'm so excited about that. And I was telling her, I was like, should we tell them that the color is going to get everywhere? And she's like, it's going to get everywhere. It's going to get everywhere. <laughs> but it'll get washed out for the most part. But you certainly are going to want to wear any type of footwear that is not, that you're okay with getting stained. You know, even in India in general, um, we always say bring a pair of shoes that you plan to toss maybe at the end yeah. of the trip. Um, because you're going to find that they'll, you know, get a little messy and a little dirty. But that's part of the adventure, right? So, yes. Yeah. So we're here. If you have any questions, yes. please throw them in the chat. I know we're a small group today. And if you're catching this on the replay, you know, feel free to ask us any questions you have about India. Like I said, I think India is really underrated. And I think there's a ton of misperceptions yeah. about what traveling through India is like. But we chose it as a destination, number one, because I wanted to experience the Holy Festival. And number two, because it's a place that, you know, as a solo female traveler is just a smidge intimidating. So this trip is scheduled for March. March. Yep. Let's look at exactly the dates. Yeah. So this trip is scheduled for March 10th to the 19th, 2022. So next year. Pretty quickly after the Women's Travel Fest. Yes. Which I know Allison is going to be at also. So. <laughs> yeah, we are going to be finishing that up and then we're going to be packing up and headed off to India right after the festival. So the fest will be great. Yeah. yeah. And what about visas? Yeah. How so hard is it to get a visa? Visas are super, super simple. It's all facilitated online. So within 30 days of your arrival, you simply go onto the website, which will provide you all the information for you upload your passport and a photo of yourself. You pay the fee. Which which is currently $25. And then from there, you are, um, you're on your way. You will receive the visa by email within 72 hours. It looks very unofficial. Um, it just literally says granted. And you print that out and that serves as your visa. Presently right now, which this may change before we go, but presently to, you know, India just reopened um, for tourism on November 15th. So that was really, really exciting. Charter flights had actually reopened on October 15th. And then it reopened for everyone else on the 15th. Um, so right now you do need to upload, um, your negative COVID test within three days of departure on a particular site, which we'll send you to, as well as your, um, arrival flight details. And then from there you'll receive, um, your confirmation. And then when you arrive in India, um, you'll be all set. Um, there, when you go through, you'll just do your biometrics with your fingerprints, your visa will pop up and you'll be on your way. Cool. That couldn't be easier. Yes. So, so we have a question. I'm booked and excited. Yay, we're excited that you're joining us. So booking your flight, that's a great question. So we should probably look at flights in early January. Typically around the 8th to the 10th is when we're going to see those prices drop for travel in March onward. So um, if you want, you can reach out to either one of us and we can kind of check and see what fares are looking like now. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll take a look at probably early Jan. And what are some good flight paths? Like yeah, from great the question. So now that all of these other options have opened up, up, right before it was during the pandemic it was only being serviced for particular visa categories and only really on united airlines um now it's opened up a lot so you have lots of options if you want to go non-stop from the united states then you can take american from new york you can hop on a united flight non-stop from chicago san francisco or Newark. there's three options on them um, presently, I think they are all operating daily, but we'll have to check the schedule and see what the operations are for March. Um, if Air India also flies to the United States, although I probably would recommend not flying them if you can, let's choose another <laughs> carrier simply because of the loss of baggage is pretty high. Um, which in my case, 15 years ago, resulted in me meeting my husband. So that was okay. Aww. But for Maybe all of you. we should all lose our bags. <laughs> we should all lose our bags. Um, but now, of course, we want you to have all of your luggage. But so and then if you want to go through um, Middle East is a great option. Emirates, Itihad, Qatar, all of those have um, regular connectivity from multiple cities in the United States, from um, Orlando, Miami, Dallas, San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, New mm -hmm. York, lots of options where you can fly from there. So um, I think that's a really convenient one. And you also can go through Europe. Um, so I would say probably less people do that, but that is always an option. And you can also go the Pacific route. If you want to go through Hong Kong or you want to go through Singapore, then that's also available too. 
Cool. I'm so excited about this trip, you guys. It's going to be so much fun, and you are in the best hands ever. Um, this trip is the 10th through the 19th of March once again. And as a thank you to you for sitting through this presentation, we are going to offer you $100 off right now. Yes. <laughs> All you need to do is register. And it's $100 All you need to do off. Is register. We will knock off $100 from your final payment. No code necessary. Just, you know, sign up for the trip. And let's get this going. It's going to be such a blast. It's going to be amazing. And something, too, that um, someone had posed before that I wanted to talk about briefly is just talking about the differences in India between these narratives that you sometimes may hear as women and what it's really like. And I encourage you, if you're concerned about that, to keep a few things in mind. One of them would be that you're traveling with this incredible group. And Damesley is such a professional organization. And the experiences that they offer, you are in incredible hands. Um, the other thing is to really listen to these stories as to things that you feel uncomfortable with and understand the difference between discomfort and danger. You know, India, many elements of it, you will probably be pushed outside of your comfort zone. But just because you're anxious of being outside of that doesn't necessarily translate to a dangerous situation. And so we encourage you sometimes to get out there a little bit and push back at your level, right? We never want to force you to do anything you're not comfortable with. Um, but we also want you to try to merge the foreign and familiar in a way that works for you um, and to understand the difference also between statistics and sensationalism, because there are, are often um, some narratives of India that make international headlines and as tragic and horrible as they are, they're so rare. Yeah. And the overall impression and experience of women, not to um, say that, you know, some women don't have that, but I would say overwhelmingly when we have feedback from our clients and the women, it's just pure joy. It really is. It's that, wow, I never really thought India had all of this. And reading about India and being in India are very, very different. And we hope yeah. that you will really consider making this the trip of your 2022 and having these memories for a lifetime because totally. we have clients that come back to us years and years later that just say, every day I wake up and I still think about India and the impression that it had. And if you allow India into your life, it really is going to be leaving a positive mark and it will be incredibly memorable and most likely change your life or change your perception of life yeah. in some pretty profound way. Yeah. They always say India gives you exactly what you need, yes. not necessarily what you want. Very but what you true. Need. Yes. So a change of perspective, new opportunities, plus you get the chance to hang out with us and meet some other really cool ladies in our yeah, community. Absolutely. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Yes, <laughs> so. we think so. So come and join us and let's experience India together. Let's share some stories and meet some people, have incredible food, Yeah. Um, and really feel the pulse of this vibrant, dynamic destination. Totally. Any final questions, y'all? Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If not, we will see you next time. So, We've kind of been like, we're sitting next to each other, so you've probably seen half of our faces <laughs> this whole time, um, but this is kind of my first live, so thank you for listening yes. and tuning in, and I hope to see you in India or on another uh, Davesley tour. And then, Allison, if they want to go to India, but they can't make these dates, yeah. you know, or if they need any help with private tours, which you definitely specialize in, please let them know your email address. Yeah, so you can head over to sodatravel.com. That's S-O-D-H-A, travel.com. You can email me directly, Allison. It's A-L-L-I-S-O-N. Allison at sodatravel.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Or you can head over to the site if you just want to get a little bit of destination nation inspiration or learn more about um, our services, our company, our philosophy, and more about me and, and my experience in India to make sure that this is the right trip for you. Although we know it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So put down a deposit. We'll see you in India or any other place that we go. And I can't wait to travel with you in 2022. Yes. Thanks, Thank y'all. Thanks. Yeah. Go. We did that it. That was awesome. We're good at this. Yes, we are. It's the best. I guess that's it. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if we got one more like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Bye, everybody. Bye. And let us know, too, if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer them for you. And uh, thanks for joining the live. We Yay. hope to see you in India. There we go. Yeah. <laughs>